Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming to Improving Your Money Habits here with the Harvard University Employees Credit Union. We're so appreciative for the partnership between HUCTW and HUECU that we get to have these educational opportunities for our members on an ongoing basis throughout the year. Um, I want to say thank you very much to the credit union for all the time and effort that goes into putting these presentations together and to our colleagues who are on the call today, Dominique, Migdalia, and Terrence from the credit union for making this possible. And thank you to the HUCTW members for taking some time out of your day. I hope you're enjoying your lunches and getting to listen in on something very helpful. Um, in addition to these webinars, there's a partnership program between the union and the credit union around housing loans. So we just want to briefly mention that for everyone's awareness. We have these zero interest loans, so it doesn't cost you hardly anything to use one of these. It's a $25 processing fee is all, and it's a zero interest loan for a year for the most common one is a rental transition loan for when you're doing first, last, broker fee, security deposit, and all of that really adds up. That rental transition loan is up to $3,500. We also have a home emergency hardship loan for homeowners who have sudden unexpected expenses. If a tree falls on your house or your boiler needs replacing or any you know, major expense like that is available up to $3,000. And then also for homeowners, we have a moving only loan up to $1,200 when you're buying a new place and have a lot of expenses with your money down on your down payment on your new mortgage. You can have a small loan for your moving expenses into that first place um, up to $1,200. And all of that is available. Reach out to me at HUCTW. I'm Danielle Boudreau. Again, I'm the recording secretary of HUCTW, and I can help you with any of those programs and then pass you along to the credit union for further processing. So without further ado, I'm going to hand things over to Dominique to get started with the presentation. All right. Thank you so much, Danielle, and welcome everyone with Improving Your Money Habits. My name is Dominique Velger. I am the Community Engagement Specialist. Joining me on the uh, end, tail end of this presentation is my colleague, Magdalia Gomez. She is AVP of Community Engagement. So before we get started, I wanted to let everyone know that we are reducing all of the background noises um, and also um, so we won't be able to hear any of your children screaming or your, your dog or anything like that. But before we get started, uh, just, you know, Halloween is just a couple of days away, but I know a lot of you guys are getting ready to, you know, prep your outfits. I know, I know I'm late. I haven't even started. So I'm going to be one of those people running around tomorrow or Saturday trying to figure out what I'm wearing. So what are you going to wear for Halloween? What will you be? Put that in the uh, chat so I, I, I can figure out what you work you're going to wear. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And I wanted to remind everyone that uh, this presentation is being recorded and that we will post it on our YouTube channel at my HUECU and you can watch it and, you know, take some notes. And then at the end, we have a workshop survey so you can tell us how we did and uh, how we can improve. All right. So we're going to get started. So also, I have some great news. We have a new branch and it's going to open at the Longwood Medical Area and that will be in a couple of weeks. So any of you who are in that area, we have another opportunity to service you and help you um, it, with your membership and any of your financial needs. So what's the difference between a credit union? So one of the things about this uh, credit union is that we're not for profit. So HUEC really exists for the sole purpose of our members. And we have a variety of different uh, ways we can help you. We have different savings, we have loans, uh, low interest rates, as Danielle mentioned earlier. And we also have a, a lot of different perks and different classes. So whatever benefits that we get, we pass it on to you. And one of the ways we pass that on to you is our Thrive Financial Wellness. It's our personal finance program, and we provide a lot of different uh, counseling. We have blogs, we have workshops. Um, you can even do some of those worksheets and calculators right on the site. And we also have these short little videos that you can actually watch and really help you on your financial journey. And you can visit that at huecu.org slash thrive. And how we really work with Thrive, we partnered up with Green Path, and Green Path is our partner. They provide different counselors and experts and also educational materials to support healthy uh, financial habits. And they speak several different languages, so they cover basically all of the bases. And then they have a 1-800 number, so you can call them um, at any time and you can get the, all the financial help that you can you need. So one of the ways we want to get started is, is behavioral economics. So what is that? 
So it's really your if how what influences your financial dis, uh, decisions. Um, how are you going to be decide? Okay, what risks you're going to take in terms of your spending, in terms of your um, saving habits, and how you do that is really trying to really channel what is your money personality? And you go, what is that? Well, right now as I'm speaking, go on nerdwallet.com. What is nerdwallet.com? So there are these little, it's a quick little quiz you can take as I'm speaking. So you kind of figure out what's your money personality? What's your relationship with money? How did you get there? Um, was it how you were raised? How, what is your money personality? Once you figure out your money personality, you can figure out your relationship um, with money in terms of how you save, um how you uh take risk and these four money personalities after you take that quiz is what will figure out make you figure out what your money personality is are you one of those people who's money avoidance money worship money status or money vigilance so i work once upon a time with a young lady who would say to me oh my goodness i have my credit score raised and I'm thinking, okay, how, what did you do? What's the magic? Give me the secret. And she said, I paid my credit cards on time. And I'm looking at her like, what do you mean? <laughs> You're supposed to. And she never thought that was a big thing to her. It was, oh, I'm just going to pay whenever I feel like it, when I get some extra money. And she didn't realize that her paying whenever she felt like it and paying all of these fees was taking a ding into her credit score because she was getting all these late fees and it was going to impact how she gets future credit. Um, so that's you know, money avoidance. And I also work with, uh, I have someone in my family <laughs> who's very money vigilant. This person, you're like, let's go out to dinner. Let's go out to a movie. Let's go hang out. No, 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 no. She's extremely frugal and she doesn't like to, ha like to have a good time. So what happens? The pandemic hits. Now she's sitting at home. She's going, oh my goodness, I'm so regretful. I wish I had gone out with you guys. I wish I did this. I wish I did that. And I said, yeah, you can be money, have a, a frugal focus and save, but you also have to be able to balance and have a good time. So now that things are opening up, she can still save, but she knows that, okay, I need to put some money aside to have a good time because you know, life is not promised about, tomorrow is not promised rather, and you gotta be able to juggle and have a, a good time as well. Then you have money, people who are money status, they equate, you know, their net worth with their self-worth. And then, you know, you have the people who are money worship, they believe money will solve all of their problems. So now that you know your money personality, what influences your money personality? Well, a couple of different ways. It depends on how you were raised, you know, or did you just see your parents just pay the bills? No one talked about it. It just happened poof, into thin air. And then, of course, we have advertising. You ever say to yourself, oh, goodness, I sure would love to go to Hawaii. Or, oh, my goodness, that outfit at Macy's is so cute. And then all of a sudden, what happens? You start seeing it on your timeline, on your phone, on all of your social media posts. You go, wait a minute, is my phone listening to what I'm saying? What is going on here? And of course, there are social factors. You know, everybody wants to look fabulous. You see the outfit, you go, oh my goodness, I really want that. I want to look good. You know, you want to look, everybody wants to look their best. And then, of course, your self-concept. Based on all of your money personalities and all of these different uh, um, temptations, if you will, you know, that basically will impact how you feel about money. So how do you maximize your money personality? So one of the ways you can do that is really setting a goal for yourself. So take a few seconds. I'll give you 10 seconds while I'm writing. Write down a financial goal that you have for the upcoming year. Do you want to buy a house? I love to go on vacation, so this is always my goal. Do you want to go on vacation? Do you want to buy a car? Do you want to just save money for whatever you want to save? So write that down right now. And then we're going to talk about different ways you are going to go about saving for that particular financial goal that you have for the new up upcoming year for 2023. And one of the ways you're gonna be able to do that is improving your behavior. And one, how are you gonna improve your behavior to get to your financial goal? Write it down. Are you gonna save? Are you going to maybe make fewer trips to Starbucks and maybe make your coffee at home? Are you going to bring your lunch to work? Because, you know, yes, some of us are still at home, but then you still have to go to the office many times. And then you think, oh, every time I go, it's like 15, 20 bucks a day to buy lunch. 
that adds up. But if you make your lunch at home, you can at least bring some of it to work. And that way you're saving towards that goal that you just wrote down for um, whatever it is that you're going to do for 2023. So that's some of the ways you can save. Um, one of the things I do is I put my credit card that I've paid off, I put it in a little plastic Ziploc and I put it in the freezer. Why do I do that? Because it's my my way to save for that vacation. Because if I take that credit card and, and I have to sit there and wait for it to thaw out, I don't have time for that. Then I, then I lose the interest to go to the mall with that credit card. It's not easily accessible in my wallet. So I just leave it in the freezer because I know I'm working towards that goal. But if it's in my wallet, mm, it's easy to just whip that thing out and just swipe, swipe, swipe. But swipe, swipe, swipe will not get me to that goal that I want to, which is to go on vacation. So one of the things you wanna do is commit to a particular course of action. And I just gave you some examples of me putting that credit card into that Ziploc and putting it in the freezer because it's gonna to take too long to thaw out and I just don't have the time. And you wanna just really try to see um, if you can take a few seconds a week or I usually say, uh, realistically, because I'm always running and gunning, 15 minutes. I know, okay, I'm gonna get paid on this date and I'm gonna get, I have to pay this bill and that bill. I do a couple of things. I actually physically write it in a calendar and then I put it in my phone. I go, okay, this is due, this is due and that is due based on when I get paid as well. And then another thing you can do is, my mom did this and I actually kind of sort of use it. I don't tell her, don't tell her. So she used the envelope method. So what she did was she would write everything. Okay, the rent is due. So I went to a private school. So she would put down tuition. She would put down groceries. And I used to look at her like, why do you need to do all that? But what it does is it really gives her um, a place to allocate all of her money. Okay, the money's going here. The money's going there. The savings is here. So that's just another way of doing it. I mean, some people now we are have all this digital equipment. We can do it on an Excel sheet or you just put it in a way, you know, okay, the money's going a certain place. And she would, she, my mother is a cash person. She used cash to put in those envelopes and would go and, and pay. I'm different. I use, uh, I'm electronic. I just go and pay it and then I'm done. But those are other things you can do to help um, with your financial goals. And how do you get to that financial goal? You use a method called goal gradient. And what you want to do is you break it down into smaller goals. So this is one example, lofty goal. Not everyone can achieve this, but this is someone who is trying to um, get to a total of savings of $10,000. So they go, well, how will I get to $10,000? How can I save this? Okay, well, I have to save annually $3,000 to get to that $10,000. In order for me to get there every month, I have to put aside $250. And for some of us, that's a lofty goal, but you can do something like $5,000, okay? If that's what you're trying to save, you figure out, okay, what do I need to, to save annually and what do I need to save a month? And for some of us, it could be weeks. You could say, okay, well, I'm going to save $100 a week. And that's more feasible for me than to maybe save the whole 250. Um, you can also save the five or $10, whatever it is that your goal is. And if it's something that's longer, don't be afraid to stretch it out in order for you to get to your goal. Another way to do this is the planning fallacy. You ever go to Target or Target, as some of us like to call it, and you go, well, I'm just gonna go in here just, just to get one little thing, right? You go in there, you start going down every single aisle. Next thing you know, I know I'm guilty, guilty as charged. You're walking out <laughs> with a cart and you go, oh, I was only supposed to be here for a few minutes. Yikes, I spent more than I wanted to spend. So now you, I've underestimated how long I was going to be inside of Target, right? And sometimes we underestimate how long it's gonna take us to get to our goal, our financial goal. And it's okay. We can just, you know, reset and, you know, we underestimate how long it is to calculate how much you're gonna pay off those payments, right? Um, so one of the things you can do, you can set up automatic monthly payments. And then once you do, when you do that, um, I told you about my method of putting that credit card in the Ziploc and putting it in the freezer. 
I don't want to add additional debt because my goal is to get to what I'm trying to save for for the coming year. So those are the different things you can do. So underestimating how long it's going to take you to get to your, your goal um, and really being uh, cognizant of that and trying to figure out, hmm, how can I change my ways? Now, had I gone to Target and really written down what I want to get and gone straight to the aisle to get what I want to get and get out of there, I probably wouldn't have been spending more than I needed to spend. But those are the things that happens. Life happens. One of the lessons is not to beat yourself up about it. Just reset and then uh, keep going to your goals. So now I'm going to pass it over to Migdalia. Thanks, Dominique. And before I jump into the second path here, I wanted to take a moment and just read some of the alpha. Uh, now, I keep calling them outfits, costumes that folks have for Halloween. So we're going to take a quick little break and do this. And as I'm reading these, if anyone else has any questions or anything else they want to add, feel free. I know we are covering a lot about behavioral economics and you may wonder, well, how does this one apply to me? If there's anything you want us to speak more on, just let us know. Uh, but to, your, to answer the question that Dominique asked earlier, people asked, said that they're wearing PJs, they're having a Halloween movie night. Someone's dressing up as Mario and Luigi with their partner. Someone is dressing up, totally dressing up as a werewolf for Halloween and working remotely. So they're gonna have a werewolf mask when the, so on when their mouth moves, when they talk, they'll have a tail and the fuzzy gloves. I love the commitment. Uh, someone's gonna be Elf from Lord of the Rings. Someone forgot didn't do it. Uh, someone's going to do Mad Max. Uh, so thank you. Very helpful to see all of these. And just like you submitted your your costumes, let us know if there's anything else that we can clarify. So when it comes to our money personality, yeah, I think Dominique mentioned this earlier, and I just want to reiterate, there's no right or wrong. Like we're not going through this and saying like, this is bad. This is good. Eh, this is how life is. These are just how we are and how we operate. And the great thing is being that awareness. So hopefully you're taking some notes and identifying some tricks or tips for how you can make your money personality or make your personality overall work for you. Uh, and we also did get a couple of questions in the chat. We are going to email the recording out to everyone and also the slides that will be available probably early next week. If you do follow us on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash myhucu, you can subscribe to get a notification when the video goes up, but the video will be put on our YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for that question. And if there are any more, feel free to keep them coming. Okay, so I one of the reasons I wanted to go over the costumes that Dominique had asked, what are people dressing up like is, I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, when there's, I had a wedding to go to this past weekend and it was a Halloween wedding and they said, you can dress up. And for the longest time, I, I had decision paralysis. I couldn't, I couldn't make it, I could not decide. I was like, well, what am I going to dress like? What is my partner going to dress up? Like there were so many different options. I started Googling uh, couples costumes and you would have thought that was helpful, but it felt overwhelming. There were so many different choices. And that decision paralysis, that also applies to us when it comes to money. You know, for some of us, it may be when we are trying to maybe decide, you know what, I need to create a budget. I know I need to, Magdalis talked about this in other presentations, or I see my friends <laughs> talk about their budgets. I probably should get on that. But then there's so many different ways to budget that it can be overwhelming. And we may not make any decision. And that is part of it as well. We can, that's where the paralysis comes in. So depending on what your financial goal is, going back to what Dominique asked earlier, let's say that, you know, for Dominique, she mentioned that her financial goal was to go on a vacation. Well, one of the things that can be done is doing the research earlier and I'm trying to estimate, okay, what is the cost going to be? Then once you know what the cost is, setting up a separate account so that it, and naming that account so it's specifically for the vacation. So maybe it's your vacation fund. So that's one way that decision paralysis, we can sort of get ahead of it. Something else for decision paralysis that's very common is our ability to save for retirement. Now, we're very fortunate that Harvard does have different retirement plans, some of which don't even re don't require us to put in our own funds, but there are other 
ways that we can save for retirement, including putting in our own funds or maybe deciding how do we want those funds invested. And a lot of times the process itself can be, again, overwhelming, not quite sure where to start. So one of the things I would recommend in that situation, if you're trying to save for retirement so that you have freedom of choice and security in, in your future, is to set up an appointment. Um, through TIA, you can set up an appointment to meet with a retirement advisor. Uh, the Harvard Retirement Center has retirement classes that are offered through the benefits office. So knowing, okay, so think about right now, what's that one thing in your mind? And you don't have to share, but this is for yourself. Just think right now, what is the one thing related to your financial goal or any other money goal that you have that you've sort of been putting off? Now, once you, that comes to mind, whether it's, you know, I have to open an account, a savings account, or I have to save for retirement, whatever that may be, maybe I have to research debt repayment strategies, then identify, okay, how can I overcome that decision paralysis? One of the things that you could do is pre-commitment. So put a date on the calendar, maybe next week, Tuesday, Tuesday night from seven to eight next week, I am going to research X, Y, Z. Pre-commit, put it on your calendar, and that's one way to combat this decision paralysis. Now, when we have financial emergencies, and this happens to all of us, it doesn't, you know, regardless of how well we plan, life is going to happen, things are going to break, and it can be sometimes challenging to say the least, but especially in that moment. Now, when we are facing an emergency, so let's say that we got a flat tire or our phone breaks, our laptop breaks, we need to buy something where, and right now we're just emphasize, focus on trying to get that problem solved. Many times that's when we may make a financial choice that may not be the best for us long-term. So one of the things to do, and this is, really helpful, even if it's not so much a financial emergency, but Dominique spoke earlier of sort of the temptation marketing that is constantly being thrown at us. I mean, how many of us don't get, or how many of us get an email that says, last chance, you know, 50% off or buy one, get one, ends today. You only have three hours left. Like there's all this pressure, like, oh, I have to make this choice right now. So one of the things that you can do is to sort of recenter yourself is to I like to say, start talking to someone. So let's say that you have a financial emergency in your home and something breaks. And instead of reaching for that credit card, take the moment to talk to someone. Maybe it's a coworker. Maybe it's, you know, over at Danielle at HUCW, because there are resources that can help you in those situations. But when we act so quickly and don't take the time to do the research, we may miss out on some of these benefits. Um, another option is comparing at least two options. I, I always think of this, especially when we think of the bigger purchases, like a car, a home, typically you're shopping around, but that's because you have time. Like you don't, most of us, I should say, I mean, maybe some of you, but I know I'll, I'm going to take a, make an assumption here that most of us don't wake up and say, I want to get a car and we go and just buy a car. Like now we usually probably do some research or a house or, you know, whatever big purchase it may be for you, whether it's you know going on vacation, like most of us do some research for these bigger items, but when it's an emergency, we may act more quickly and may rush and may not find the best option. So again, if something, not even if, I apologize, but when something happens, because it's, you know, life is going to happen to all of us, but when something happens, take the time, find out what your timeline is. So if it's something such as, you know, you take your car to the mechanic and something's wrong with the vehicle, just ask. It's like, you know what, before you do the work, let me, how long do I have before I have to make a decision? Maybe it's calling around and asking a couple of other mechanics once you have the quote from one. If it's something like, a computer or some sort of technology that breaks and you need to repair it before purchasing a new one, taking the time to research different options. Mental accounting. So this is another one that I want to, I'm going to ask if, and I'll ask you to use the chat for this one. I always love uh, hearing from others. How many of you, and it's, you know, I won't say, Taryn said this, Dominique said this, but just out of curiosity, let me know in the chat, 
how many of you have ever received a tax refund and spend the money or you know maybe not a tax refund maybe a bonus something else some unexpected money and spent it as if it were free money am i the only one or has anyone else done that guilty <laughs> yep seeing a couple of folks saying that they've done the same thing exactly there's something about money whether it's a gift card that you win a tax refund there's something about money that wasn't budgeted that when you receive it you're like oh i this is free money i can use this for whatever i'd like and no not here to say don't do that it's more to put it in line with what are your financial goals can we somehow utilize our financial goals to put some of that money maybe towards that so I found myself very guilty of this, especially when I was younger to when I received my tax refund, I was like, oh, well, that's money I can just go shopping with. It's money that I could just, you know, buy whatever I want to buy, or maybe I can go out to eat with my friends. It's free money. So one of the things that I started doing was creating mental shortcuts. What I mean by this is most of you probably know, have an amount right now. Let's say we, we all went to the movies and some of you may already have in mind, when I go to the movies, I don't buy popcorn, I don't buy candy, or I sneak in my candy. Or some of you may say, I buy, I bring my own water. So you already know when you go to the movies, sort of what behavior more or less you have. So, or it could be with lifts or Uber rides, any sort of ride share. Some of you might say, well, if it's you know over $20, I'll try to maybe take the tea. But if it's under five or, not five, that's unrealistic right now with our gas prices, but it's under 10 or 15, maybe I'll take it. You already have some mental shortcuts for most of the expenses, not all, but most day-to-day -day expenses or potential expenses. Do the same and create a mental shortcut for that unexpected money. So if you do receive a tax refund or maybe there's a bonus or you have overtime hours, what some of the things that you could do is decide I want 25% of that money that's unexpected anytime that that happens to go towards my financial goal. Or maybe, and maybe I want 25% to go towards fun. Like whatever I wanna do with it, I'll spend 25% on the fun, spend 25% on that financial goal. And maybe, maybe the other 50% will go towards debt repayment. And that's just an example. You know your financial situation better than anyone. So for you, it might not be a 25, 25, 50 split. Maybe it's a 10, 80 10 split it, it really depends on your situation the key though is treating having a plan in place for money before that you that money sort of spends itself if you will and i already spoke about the other one for mental accounting which is naming your accounts so going back to whatever your financial goal is as dominique said hers is to try, uh, go on vacation so if she puts that money on a vacation fund and a vacation account and actually names the account. This is something you can do for any of you that have HGCU accounts. You can do this. You can just rename the account. Um, I love doing this. I love renaming my accounts because it just helps me. It just helps me keep things straight. But the other piece, the behavioral science behind it is, if I've named my account vacation fund, and Terrence and Dominique invite me to go out to eat, and let's say you know this week's been tough. I don't have the the money in my in my account. I'm less likely to pull the money from my vacation fund to go to dinner with them here. Because then I'll, because in my mind, that vacation fund, that's money that I want to spend at, I want to spend having dinner somewhere else, maybe while I'm on vacation. So that's what one of the benefits of naming those savings accounts. Okay, scarcity. This is a big one. We all experience this. We've, you know, definitely saw this during the peak of the pandemic where toilet paper, milk, eggs, because it was just not available as much, we, a lot of people hoarded, took many more and it was just like, oh, I need to get, there's not enough I need to buy because tomorrow there won't be any. And yes, there were times that that was true, but for the most part, especially when it comes to ads that you receive, they are playing on that. As, as humans, it is in, it's innate, it's part of our nature. We want to have, when there's, some, there's a risk of not having something, we want to hold on to it, we want to gather. But one of the things that we have to keep in mind, especially when it comes to these ads that we're receiving is, their ads are trying to get us to buy. They're playing into, or essentially taking advantage of 
the way that our brain works. So we have to outsmart it. So with scarcity, there are a couple of different things that you can do. One of the things that you could do with scarcity is if you find yourself being more tempted to make purchases when you get an email saying like saying, oh, it's 50% off or last day to buy or something along those lines, one of the things that you could do is unsubscribe from the emails. I know I personally have to do this because I'm not, for the most part, I'm not much of a shopper. I, I, I spend more of my money on food. I, I love going out to eat, so I have to work on that to try to stay on my budget. But for the most part, I'm not typically a shopper. But when I'm getting these emails, I'm more likely to click on them. And then when I click, I'm like, oh, I could get this for someone or, oh, I may need this. Oh, it's a good deal. So I'd start, honestly, I just started unsubscribing because I knew that that was causing me to spend more, be outside of my budget. So I just unsubscribed. Another piece, and uh, for some of you that may have known uh, uh, one of our colleagues that used to work with us, she always said that lazy, her laziness got the best of her. So she never saved her credit card information on her phone because half the time she said she would be in bed or on the couch looking at ads or looking online and it was very unlikely that she would get out of bed to go get her credit card so she would be forced to keep it in her shopping cart and wait and usually by the next day or by the time that she did get her up and get around to getting her credit card most of the time she was thought about the the option no longer wanted to buy that or make that purchase so this is where knowing your your personality, knowing you know what's gonna trigger me to spend. Uh, Dominique made a great point of just not having that credit card around. I know for myself, one of the things I do is when I'm in the in the square, there's just so much. And you know, Square, as we know, has changed a lot recently, but there's still more and more stores that are popping up again. And it is very easy to go outside and just go for a walk. Like today's a beautiful day. If I wanted to go outside, it's hard to not spend money it can be very hard. So what I started doing is if I'm going for a lunch walk during my lunch time, I have my, I brought my lunch, I purposely leave my wallet in the office. You know, I keep my ID with me, of course, but I don't bring my credit cards. I don't bring funds with me so that I'm less likely to spend. If I am going with a group of friends, maybe I'll give my, I'll bring, sort of do the cash method in a sense, and I'll bring maybe $5 with me or 10. If I'm going for a walk, I'm like, okay, Maybe I'll only spend five, but like I think about it beforehand, so I'm less likely to wait, excuse me, less likely to spend. Uh, and that helps me control that sense of scarcity, realizing like, you know what, I can wait and then I'm less likely to spend. And this is hyperbolic discounting is a really big one. A lot of us value present day us more than future day us. And this is just the, the way I'm sure you've seen it, the marshmallow challenge, or more so re recently, it was re it's been redone with candy on social media for kids, where they you tell the child, wait, you can have one marshmallow today, or you can, right now, or if you wait, you know, until I come back, you can have two or three or a significant amount more. Some of us are really good at waiting, but some of us, we don't have it in us. <laughs> We're not waiter. We're not those that the patient ones. We want to sort of enjoy that candy in that moment. And that applies a lot of times to retirement. So with retirement, $100 a month, and this is just an example of 100, but of course it could be more, it could be less, just for the concept here. That's really where we like to always fo focus on more the concept than the specific numbers. But here's the concept of, I, you know, I have other bills to pay, I have debt that I wanna pay off today, I, I'd rather focus on retirement later. That's a, that's a later me problem. Today, I, I need this money. By not putting the funds aside, here you can see we have two individuals. This example is with Iris and Lucas. Iris saves between the ages of 25 to 35. She's putting aside $100 a month, and she's doing this for 10 years. So she's investing a total of $12,000. And based off the market, giving up about an 8% return, which historically it does. I understand that right now, but historically. Iris would have a future account balance of $200,000. Lucas, on the other hand, decided to wait until he was 35, and then he did the same. He invested $100. He did it for 30 years, though. Iris stopped, and then her money grew. Lucas, it grew, but he, he, he did it consistently for 30 years. 
even though Lucas saved more or invested more, his future value was $51,000 less. The reason for this is compounding interest and basically having time on your side. So one of the recommendations that we have is if you're in a situation that you sort of have delayed saving for retirement or upping how much you're saving for retirement, there are many different calculators. You can go on our website, hucu.org slash calculators. Um, you can just Google investing ca investment calculators, retirement calculators, and you can see what if I add, started at investing an additional $20 a month? What if it was 50? And just play with the numbers to an amount that would be comfortable and would fit into your budget and see the impact of that decision earlier. Another way of thinking about this, here we're talking about investing, but let's flip this on the other side. And you know, this is when investing is when interest is working for us. Debt is when interest is not working for us. It's when we're paying that interest. So if you're an individual that has been trying to pay off their debt and it's been a, it's been a little bit challenging. See what an additional five, ten, twenty dollars, you know, in, increase the amount to see at what point will it save you more money if you put a little bit more towards your debt repayment now. So for those, you can again on our website hucu.org/calculators, you can look up debt repayment calculators and just say, okay, if I have let's say a ten thousand dollar debt at 5% and I'm paying $150. How long will it take me to pay it off? Well, what if I pay 175? What if I pay 185? Like slowly see what the difference would be if you are able to increase the amount that you're either paying off in debt or increase the amount that you're saving towards. Uh, sometimes just seeing those numbers can be enough for us to, to take an action. And Let's go back to our money personalities. If you're someone that's a bit more money avoidant, schedule that time. If you're someone that is a little bit more money vigilant, think about if for the saving part, that could be an opportunity for you to sort of take advantage of that, your, your vigilant personality and, and seeing, okay, if I save a little bit more, I can have much more towards my retirement in the future. I have a couple more slides here, but I encourage anyone, if you have any questions, please submit them in the Q&A. I will start taking them uh, shortly. The other part, Dominique mentioned this earlier, and I want to reemphasize this, is when it comes to money behavior, or, you know, I know we're here to talk about finances, but honestly, let's talk about life, because there's so much that's going on with life. Uh, so whether it's a professional goal that we have, whether it's a, a, a physical goal, a health goal, a, a, a financial goal, there are times that we're not going to hit the mark 100%. Let's be real. Most of us will try our best, but it, it takes it takes a couple of tries. And that is okay. And I think we all need to be kind to ourselves and realize that if I am trying to save $10,000, that's a big amount of, a, a big chunk of change. <laughs> like that's a lot of money. And if I can't save the 3000 that I wanted this year, but I save 2000, that is still a win. That is still better than not having saved anything. So keeping in mind that it's okay that sometimes we're going to not hit the mark, that's okay. When we don't hit, when we miss the mark and we give up, that's really when you get into this what the heck effect. That's when we decide, you know what, I'm going to give up. Maybe I was trying to train for a race and I miss a couple of days of training and then I just say, you know what, I'm just going to stop. I'm not going to keep, I'm not going to do the race. Or maybe I am trying to eat healthy and I end up having a couple of fast food meals and then I decide, you know what, I'm just, I'm not going to continue on this health journey. That is one approach. Or we can just say, you know what, yep, I, yesterday didn't go as planned. I'm going to try again today. Or instead of even yesterday, this morning didn't go as planned. I'm just going to switch it for this afternoon. And that's the, the same concept that we want you to think about when it comes to these financial goals. If you do have a day, or not even if, but when you have a day, when we have a day that we spend more than what we wanted, when we don't save as much as what we saved, that's okay. We don't have to wait until the New Year's to, to create a whole new resolution. We can just change course and keep going back on that course and realize that it's okay, it's going to happen, and you're gonna keep going because we're in it for the long run. 
So I know I, we went through a lot of information. So I'm going to just do a quick little recap of some next steps. So the first one, I hope you all took the time to take that money personality quiz. And you know, that is just one of many different money personality quizzes. The key here is knowing what drives you to spend, what drives you to save, what are your money triggers, and how do you use that for your advantage? How do we use our money personalities for our to help us reach our financial goals? And I hope that you were taking some notes or have some ideas of some of the things that you'll be doing in the future based off of this presentation. And I'm gonna ask another question. So what is, of all the topics that we discussed today, and again, do not worry, I'm not gonna say, Taryn said this, Dominique said that, but choose one behavior. What is one behavior that you wanna work on in the next seven days? So what is an example of something that you're going to do in the next seven days based off of what you heard in this presentation? For example, it could be, you know what, Migzalia mentioned that Harvard has free retirement counseling through TIA. Let me contact the retirement advisor. It could be, oh, I'm gonna name one of my savings account. So what is one behavior that you are going to implement in the next seven days? And while I wait for that, I'm gonna move on to the next slide so that you have a little bit more information of some resources that can help you with those financial goals. All of you have access to free credit counseling through Green Path, and that is free for you because we pay for it. We believe in it. We want you all to have access to it. I know when we hear free, it could be a little bit, why is that free? Where, what's, how is that possible? It's free because we pay for it because we want you to have access to it. This is available to you and everyone in your household. They are accredited credit counselors. They provide budget counseling and free federal student loan counseling as well. And, and then the other slide I wanna tell you really quickly, this is, a, oh, I apologize, I forgot. We have a survey. <laughs> Please complete the survey. We actually go through the survey results with Danielle and Laura and others at HUCTW to make sure that we're providing you the information you want that it's at the time you want, the topics you want. So if there's something that we don't cover or something that we could do better, let us know. We're always here looking to improve. And please do that at huecu.org slash survey. Thank you very much. And I'm going to see a couple of the things that came in. So someone said that they are going to save more money, maybe 20% monthly. I like that. It's what I hear, yep. That is a good goal, but it's also, you know, if you if you try for 20 and realize that 18 or 15 is doable, that's okay. The, the key is, you know, work towards it slowly. Someone said, I will take a look at the bills and put the dates on my calendar. I suffer from out of sight, out of mind when it comes to my bills. They sneak up on me and ruin my day. Yes, I, t I completely understand that. I love that, yes, putting it on your calendars. Um, little tip, I trick myself and think that and put it on the calendar for a day or before it's due. Um, that way I, I have less like I'm less likely to miss it. So that that's an, a little tip, but I love that. Someone said that they're gonna break down their financial goals into smaller goals. Love that. Uh, someone said they're gonna delete their easy access to credit cards and vendor sites. Yes, that is a big one. Um, I'm one of those people. I'm, probably one of the few. I don't have any of my cards in, in Apple Pay. I don't have any of my cards tied to my phone. I make it harder for myself because I, I just don't, I don't want it to be that easy for me to spend money. Uh, someone said that they're going to register for the Green Path webinar on money personality. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for, for mentioning that. Um, someone else said that they refused to set up the Apple Pay too. Yep. Um, so yes, we do have other webinars that you can attend. Green Path does have one coming up on money personality. You can view upcoming workshops at hucu.org slash workshops. Uh, and then someone said that they're gonna examine their last credit card statement to figure out where it's all going. Yes, that is a very good one. It sneaks up on us, so I love that. I love taking the time to just re really look at those credit card statements. And for anyone that didn't have one i hope that by me reading some of those you were inspired to maybe take one of those as yours as well and a quick little disclaimer we always have to include it dominique and i are here to provide educational information it cannot be legal tax investment advice other than the general consensus of like 
yes, savings is good. I think we all agree as that saving is beneficial, but that is why we have resources such as Green Path that you can contact. For those that are looking to buy a home, we have our mortgage loan originators that can provide home counseling advice and any other type of services that you may need. We will, uh, Green Path is a great point to start to get that one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I am going to see if, Danielle, if there's anything else you'd like to add before we sign off. Uh, I don't, I don't see. Okay. I don't think Danielle has anything else. So I think I'm going to wish everyone a wonderful afternoon. It is beautiful out right now. So if you, you know, try to leave you a little bit of extra time during your lunch break, if you are on taking your lunch break to be with us, and hopefully you have time to go maybe for a quick walk outside. But everyone, hope you have a wonderful afternoon and happy Halloween to those that celebrate and are dressing up. And Hope to see you at a future presentation. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.